Hello, uh, my name is Jeff Nunn. I am the adjunct curator for space history here at the Museum of Flight in Seattle. Uh, we are down here in one of our secure storage areas where we keep ar artifacts that we're getting ready for exhibit. And today I'm gonna give you a special sneak preview of some of the artifacts that are coming up for the new Apollo exhibit that's gonna open next year. So what you're seeing here is one of the Apollo F1 engines that Jeff Bezos and Bezos Expeditions brought up from the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean in 2013. This here, this part here is the thrust chamber for the number three engine from Apollo 12, the second mission to the moon. And so if you um, can imagine, this is actually only about one third the size of a complete F1, but this is where all the business happened. If you imagine down here at this end, that's where the, the big bell-like nozzle extension that contained the, the, the blast of launch uh, and helped propel the engine forward uh, extended out that way. And those engine bells were, were, were big, but they weren't particularly sturdy when it came to impact on the, the ocean floor, so they just got shredded. But the, the thrust chamber where all of the, the thrust from the engine was produced, uh, those survived and that's what's gonna be on display uh, at the museum next year. And so we've got it on its display armature here. And so if you can imagine this whole engine uh, when it was attached to the massive Saturn V moon rocket would be rotated so that this end was down and this end is pointed up. And so the, the engine would, would blast towards space shooting a million and a half pounds of thrust for each engine out this end. These engines were very powerful pieces of machinery. If you can imagine each engine, and there were five of them on every Saturn V, each engine produced a million and a half pounds of thrust. They were, they were designed to withstand some incredible forces. But 40 years resting on the bottom of the seafloor, 14,000 feet underwater, has turned these, these very mighty pieces of machinery into very delicate, often, uh, sculptures that from natural uh, corrosion and erosion processes. So if you take a look here at this, this used to be uh, a big solid piece of metal designed to, to handle uh, the, the fuel and, and oxidizer that were flowing into the engine. And you can, you look at just this delicate lattice work. And this, as, as the engine sat on the sea floor, uh, corrosion processes similar to what happens on, on cars on salted roads in the winter and the like, uh, gradually etched away at the material that the engine was made out of. And so it's, it's they, they feel somehow like ancient artifacts, even though uh, they, they launched just about uh, less than 50 years ago. So if, if you take a look at this sort of hoof print shaped thing right here, this is where the, the, the struts uh, that would help these engines gimbal to direct their, their thrust during launch and keep the, the rocket pointed in the right direction, that's where those struts attached. And when these rockets hit the Atlantic Ocean, these massive you know, pieces that kept the engines pointed in the right direction just snapped clean off and left behind this, this really incredible uh, weld material just in this almost uh, pristine shape. It's, it, it's just kind of mind blowing when you think about the, the amount of force that it would take to just snap that part off uh, in that way. When they brought the engines up from the bottom of the Atlantic, they knew they were from the Apollo missions, but figuring out which mission each engine came from was, was quite a task, and it took a lot of investigation. And often, uh, it came down to actually finding these tiny identifying numbers, uh, often acid etched or, or stenciled into the, onto the body of the engine, which they were able to trace back to the NASA records in order to identify which engine each part came from. So in addition to the thrust chambers, we also received several crates of, uh, of other components from F1 engines. And if you come over and take a look in the box here, uh, this, this part in here is a heat exchanger from an engine that actually uh, flew on Apollo 16, so the second to last of the Apollo moon landing missions. Now, if you can imagine, the heat exchanger, uh, the engines didn't, they needed a way to get the, the fuel and the oxidizer actually out of the tanks and into the engine. So with the F1s, they actually had a big uh, 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 turbine that hung off of the side of the engine that actually drove pumps that pumped fuel and oxidizer into the engines. And the heat exchanger sat at the bottom of the turbine. So when we display the engines, we are actually going to mount this part, and you can see we actually already have a, a mounting uh, piece here. This is not part of the actual artifact, but this was designed for the exhibit. And this whole part is going to be stacked with the, the thrust chamber that we took a look at before 
up here where it would be on an actual engine when it was, it was complete and ready to fire. So we are going to stack that and a number of other parts that we received to create sort of an engineering exploded view, but using actual F1 components. Here we have the, uh, the liquid oxygen dome, the LOX dome from uh, the Apollo 12 engine that we were looking at. Uh, and if you can imagine, this was a big hefty solid piece of metal that was designed to handle the inflow of all of the oxidizer, all of the liquid oxygen into the engine that would help it ignite. But if you take a look down here, it's, it's gotten eroded down into just this absolutely paper thin uh, sheets of, of corroded metal from its time on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. And this, this piece, you can also see there, there are some, uh, some, some cracks uh, in the, the side of it from sitting on the seafloor, or perhaps from its impact on the, on the seafloor. And this is going to be stacked with the, the thrust chamber that we saw before. So if you come over here, uh, it's going to be lined up at the top of the thrust chamber here. And if you can, again, if you can imagine during launch with the whole complete engine together, the entire setup would be rotated up that way so that this end is down and the lock stone would have been right up at the, the top of the F1 engine. So we're back up here in the public area of the museum. If, if you, we've seen the, the F1 pieces that are gonna come out on display as part of our new remodeled Apollo exhibit next year. But if you just can't wait, we already have a teaser display that you can see today. Uh, if you look behind me, we have the injector plate from the number three engine from Apollo 12 is already out on display. It's in our Apollo gallery. Uh, it is, you, the gallery is free with admission. Uh, to check out. So come down to the museum. Uh, the current display is going to be up until January when we have to start uh, removing uh, the current exhibit in order to make way for the all-new remodeled gallery next year. So if you just can't wait, come down to the museum. You can check out the preview exhibit uh, today. I'm Jeff Nunn from the Museum of Flight, signing off.